In today's video, we'll be looking at water. So we'll be focusing on the properties of water, and then based on the properties, we'll try to uh, explain a little bit of the functions of water. It seems obvious that water is really important, but actually it, it is crucial that we understand how water interacts with other water molecules, and also perhaps with other biochemical molecules as well. So we'll first of all, we'll look at the properties. So we can see water is presented in a V shape, and that is because each of these bonds represents a pair of shared electrons, but then there's also two lone pairs of electrons on the other side of oxygen. So that's why it sort of electrons repel one another, so hence why it is in a V shape. Now, for those of you who do chemistry as well, then this might be a, sort of an easier concept or overlapping concept for you, which is electronegativity. Oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. Now, if you go into a bit of more detail in terms of chemistry, then it's about how uh, it's about the ability of that atom to attract electrons to orbit around it. So, in this case, electrons that are shared between the two uh, will spend more time orbiting around oxygen rather than hydrogen. For example, here I've drawn uh, the water molecules and uh, chlorine molecules here. So if I have to draw out the pathway in which uh, the electrons that are shared between the different uh, atoms will travel, then let's say in water, it will spend a lot of time orbiting around oxygen, like so, and then but sometimes it will go to the hydrogen and goes back to the oxygen a lot of times, and then it goes a little around hydrogen like that. But most of the time it will be around uh, oxygen. Because these two atoms are the same, so therefore the nucleus would have sort of equal power in terms of attraction uh, of the electrons. So the electrons will travel evenly or equally around the two nucleus, like so. So we say that in chlorine molecule, there is uh, the electrons are equally shared. So like you can we can represent it as uh, right in the middle of the bond. Whereas in water, there is an unequal share. Of electrons, so the electrons are sort of more leaning towards the oxygen rather than the hydrogen, and that is the concept of electronegativity. And therefore, if we think about it this way, uh, we can say that because the electrons are orbiting around the oxygen more, uh, because the electrons are negative, so therefore we say that the oxygen within the water molecule will be slightly more negative than the hydrogen. So we call it a delta negative region, and that is. Uh, Greek symbol delta. Okay, so delta refers to slightly. So slightly negative region for the oxygen, whereas the hydrogens are slightly positive, so hence why we represent it as delta positive. And that is a very important uh, trait of water. Quick summary, oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, so therefore the electrons will orbit around oxygen and more than the hydrogen. So therefore, because the electrons are negative, and that there's an equal share of the electrons, the oxygen becomes slightly more negative, uh, becoming a region of delta negative, whereas the hydrogens are slightly more positive, delta positive. And if there is ever a molecule that exhibits this sort of properties, where there is an unequal share of electrons, uh, creating regions of slight charges, we say that they are polar. Simply a term referring to the molecule that has slightly positive and slightly negative regions. So, so other polar molecule examples apart from water will include uh, glucose and uh, hydrochloric acid, whereas HCl, so uh, the electrons will go towards the Cl nucleus rather than the hydrogen nucleus. Whereas for non-polar molecules, examples include chlorine molecules, hydrogen, oxygen, basically any molecule that is an element in some sense. So here we've got a bunch of water molecules, and we mentioned that oxygen is slightly delta negative and hydrogens are delta positive. Now, as do everything in life, opposites attract. So basically what that means is there will be a slight attraction between the delta negative oxygen and the delta positive uh, hydrogens of another water molecule. And that particular attraction is called a hydrogen bond. So in this case, we can label all of the hydrogen bonds out. So for example here, there will be a hydrogen bond, and basically we can do so for all of the, uh, for the whole diagram. There is a classic exam question where they will ask you how do water molecules uh, bond together or how do they interact together? Then you need to be able to illustrate this diagram or either draw it out and label it or explain it. Always make sure when you draw it like this, you have to label or draw the hydrogen bonds in dotted lines because they're not strong bonds. Hydrogen bonds are very, very weak. So what happens is as a water molecule flows through one another, uh, these hydrogen bonds can break easily and keep reforming. So that's why it's important that it's in dotted lines, not a solid line, which are covalent bonds. 
Uh, and the other thing is you have to make sure that you illustrate that the hydrogen bond is formed between a delta negative region, that is oxygen, and delta positive, which is hydrogen, of another water molecule. You have to make sure you illustrate that it's a different water molecule, otherwise you will lose the mark because they, uh, the examiner might think that you're illustrating the covalent bond within the same molecule. So always make sure if you're drawing a diagram like so, label it that the oxygen is delta negative and that the hydrogen is delta positive on the other side. And in an exam, you can either draw it or you can just type it out. This is like a classic free marker question. One mark was saying that they have hydrogen bonds, one mark was saying that the oxygen is delta negative and the hydrogen is delta positive, and another map was saying that the bonds exist between two different water molecules. So if you have to write it out in a sentence, you can say water's polarity allow the molecules to form hydrogen bonds between the delta positive hydrogen region and the delta negative oxygen of different water molecules. So now we have a look at the important functions of water. We they won't have a lot of questions specifically just on water, but you definitely need to use some of the following things that we'll say, and certainly the uh, properties that we just mentioned to illustrate or become part of your answer to a bigger question. So first of all, we've got uh, one key thing is they can be a solvent, uh, referring to a solution uh, or liquid that can dissolve things. But it can dissolve polar substances such as enzymes, glucose and amino acids, but it's a bit harder for it to dissolve non-polar stuff. So the other thing is it's, uh, it can be a medium for chemical reactions. The reason for that is for chemical reactions to occur, the molecules have to be able to move across one another, or indeed to travel across the distance so that they can come to, into close proximity to react. So being dissolved in water, uh, in one form or another, allows them to actually move around to react. The third thing is they can be a transport medium. So this should be quite, uh, hopefully quite obvious. For example, in animals, it will be the blood or the plasma, um, which is made up of mainly water, and that is about 55% of our blood. And in plants, it will be the xylem and the phloem. The xylem transports water and mineral ions uh, from the roots all over the plant's uh, body, and whereas phloem will transport dissolved sugars in the form of sucrose um, across everywhere in the plant. And it will become increasingly important later on when you look at transpiration, which is the uh, of water vapor from the leaf surface. They produce something called the transpiration stream, that which is the movement of water up the xylem. And they rely on the hydrogen bonds that we mentioned. Here I've drawn the wall of the xylem, and that is basically the xylem vessel. And I've got the water molecules uh, inside. Now, each of the water molecules can travel only one at a time up the xylem vessel. So this is what we say uh, called capillary actions. And what happens is uh, we say that there will be hydrogen bonds in between the water molecules like so. And this is uh, cohesion. Think about cooperation, okay? Uh, so cohesion meaning uh, the hydrogen bonds between water molecules, they're the same thing. But then at the same time, uh, the capillary action relies on cohesion and adhesion, which is the hydrogen bonds formed uh, between a water molecule and the surface that it is sort of adhered to. So this is adhesion. Adhesion, add, think about adhere, so sticking to a surface. Capillary action relies on both adhesion and cohesion uh, to allow the water molecules to be transported upwards. So the water will pull the next water molecule up, the hydrogen bonds between the water molecule and the wall will keep it there. Another uh, function of it is coolant. And just think about a very hot summery day or after you've done some exercise, you'll be sweating. And the reason for that is that the sweat can then evaporate uh, and take away the uh, heat on your skin surface by kinetic energy transfer and therefore uh, to take away the heat and cool you down. That is really important. So for example, you don't get a fever and that prevents your enzymes from denaturing. Which finally, there's another one which is habitat and uh, we don't have to explain too much about that, it's quite obvious. Aquatic organisms live in water. So for example, the fish in the sea, or there might be certain microorganisms that live within the sea or the lakes. And certainly there'll be some organisms or some insects that live on the surface of the water or the lake, and they can walk across or float on that because of water tension. So water is really, really important. Like I mentioned before, they don't always give you a whole question on water unless they want you to illustrate the hydrogen bonds in between. Uh, 
but just keep it in mind that they might you might need to answer some of the questions using some of these sort of things and certainly when illustrating the hydrogen bonds properties uh, it's not just happening between water but certainly between any uh, two molecules containing delta positive and delta negative regions so it could be perhaps in the secondary structure in proteins when the uh, the a polypeptide chain folds itself into alpha helix and beta pleated sheets. They do hydrogen bonds as well, relying on the uh, delta negative oxygen and delta positive hydrogens on the different amino acids. Just keep in mind, include these things in the bigger picture on the bigger answer.